Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. This is Monday's message, and it will be followed up with Monday's video game video of the day. This, I did not go to sleep at all between Monday night and Tuesday morning, and now it's Tuesday afternoon. I have not slept. I have not gone to bed. I stayed up all night and all morning taking care of stuff and here I am and I'm not going to sleep until I get out these two YouTube videos for the day I have put this off way too long and I want it out now so my apologies hell oh my gosh camera don't do that ah what in the world is that how long were y'all looking at me blurry that was weird my apologies I don't know why that happened I apologize for getting these things out as late as I've been getting them out. Oh, I need to tighten up, and that's why I was just like, nope, no sleep. I am going to get this video out. It's going to happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make both videos happen some way, somehow. After this will be a little bit of Mortal Kombat X story mode. Since video editing software still isn't in effect, it's going to happen. I'm going to make it happen. And again, no sleep until it does happen. Am I tired? Yes. Will I be okay? To the best of my knowledge, I've pulled long days and nights and both before. So I should, in all likelihood, be fine. So we're going to dive into this. And since it has been a while, I mean, I, of course, well, was, you could just watch part one right now if you wanted to. The beauty of YouTube, this isn't a Sunday message where I missed a week and a few days and did horrible planning and was horribly irresponsible. For y'all, you can simply watch one video and then watch part two. But all of this, for anyone who has been keeping track of the days and keeping track of the videos, and for anyone who happens upon this in the future, just in the name of me being honest and to give you all an accurate timeline of how this channel and I have gone. It's been a while since the last message came out. Just check the date, in the not in the video description, but it's like under the published. It, there should be a published date somewhere right beneath the video. And, and there's a huge difference between the two dates of these two. So, Proverbs 21 verse 1 and 2 the verses that I brought up last time and want to bring up again prior to me going into political stuff the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord like the rivers of water he turns it wherever he wishes every way of a man is right in his own eyes but the Lord weighs the hearts so God is in control he controls the rulers of this world and indeed he controls all human hearts and controls all human actions to whatever degree he to whatever degree he says he's going to do it obviously free will exists man sins and God does not like sin at the same time God is in control in the middle of us having free will it makes Calvinism and Arminianism a real pain in the rear end to try to decide between because they both are correct and that is an in, that's a series of sermons for another day. Not going any further into that, but God is in control despite the fact that we have free will and do choose to do things that he doesn't want us to do. God is still in control, not just of the king. He is in control of all of us and world events. Nothing has escaped his eye, including Donald Trump becoming president. And while everyone thinks they're right, while everyone's convinced of their own correctness, the Lord is the one who weighs the hearts. He's the one who ultimately says what is right and what is wrong. And whether it's here in the judgment seat, he will let us know what's right and what's wrong. And if we're wise, we'll open up our minds and hearts and spirits to him now, to hear right now what he says is right and what is wrong. And this is incredibly important when it comes to the President of the United States. Something that affects me and something that affects all of us and will affect Donald Trump himself as a person greatly over the next four, potentially eight years. So without belaboring uh, any more time, I can ramble on a good long ways. And I'm sure I'll take up all 30 minutes of this message today. So let's dive right into where we were. If you want any context, any pretext, watch, uh, I was going to say chapter one or verse one. This is not the Bible. This is Jesus Freaking Gamers YouTube channel. Um, 
If you want any context or pretext, watch message number one. It is 30 minutes. I understand it's a bit of a long haul for some people. At the same time, these are 30 minute messages. They have been from the beginning. And I thought about shortening them, decided not to because I want to do a quote unquote typical Sunday message. They used to be an hour in American history. And I don't know what they were in ancient church history. I know in uh, the book of Acts, Paul literally preached all night one time. So 20 minutes, it's a bargain deal. Or I'm sorry, 30 minutes is a bargain deal. Uh, be thankful and grateful. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that it's a YouTube video, so you can really just go wherever you want in the video and skip around and see if part of it interests you or not. So I'm going to start with I'm going to I'm going to start this message by finishing up my thoughts on the Constitution Party, the party that I largely support probably about 90 to 95 percent of the issues on, and then I'll move on to the man, the myth, the meme, Donald Trump himself. So I talked about in the last message how the Constitution Party is a big deal to me. I I love the Constitution Party. I love what they stand for, by and large, for the most part. Uh, the presidential candidate was Daryl Castle this um, last election, and he is the man that I voted for that I thought would be a good president. I don't know much about him. He wasn't, to my knowledge, in any news article, in any press conference, in any kind of debate, not with even the smaller the smaller candidates. Maybe he was. If so, I unfortunately missed it. As I, I, I'll mention this one more time. I pay just enough attention to politics to know roughly who I should vote for, so I don't get deep and heavy into it. And for someone who's a bit more on the casual observance side, a smaller candidate like Daryl Castle will, by and large, I won't know much about them personally. I'll know more about the party and the party's stance. And as the presidential candidate, I'm going to assume that his beliefs and his programs and the things that he wants to do are going to be along the lines of what the party stands for. And what the party stands for, it's some really, really good stuff. And by going into this, this will tell you where I stand and will set the stage for what I will finally say about Donald Trump himself. Just to talk about some of the various issues where I agree, maybe agree or disagree. Um, they talk about gun control, and I'm going to, I may quote some parts of the website, for the most part I'm gonna be summarizing it. Gun control, they are very much so of the mind, you know, everyone is allowed to own their own firearms. Uh, we don't need more control as in, you know, less guns, we, mean, we need gun control as in, the population can bear arms and defend themselves against the government if necessary. To quote, this will be a quote from the web website, and this is a quote from George Mason, co-author of the Second Amendment. I ask, sir, what is the militia? It is the whole people. To disarm the people is the best and most effectual way to enslave them. So it is... It, it, the original Second Amendment, according to the Constitution Party, if, especially if you read down, is to defend the people. It's not just so we can bear arms to hunt. It is to bear arms to take human lives that may try to oppose us and come against us and harm us, including and up to our own government trying to enslave us. It is arguable, and I would agree, that that was what the Second Amendment was originally there for, to make sure that the government just didn't declare a dictatorship and then take over. If the entire people are armed, the government is going to have a very hard time doing that. So that is a very hardline, right-wing stance on gun control, which I agree with. And again... This bit, this will bear repeating over the course of this channel because it's a part of who I am. I'm very conservative, probably ultra conservative. I do not make an apology for that. It is what I genuinely, genuinely believe from the bottom of my heart. And unless I am proven wrong by good, sound logic and reason, 
I will not take these things back. It may not be the popular opinion, but I believe it is the correct one and the wise one. And then it says common core, and this is in regards to education. I'm kind of eh on that one. I don't entirely agree or disagree with everything. Apparently, just to read a few brief things from the website, the Constitution Party supports the parental right to provide for the education of their children. The Constitution Party opposes any federal control over the education of children. The Constitution Party calls for the elimination of the Federal Department of Education. The Constitution Party encourages state legislatures to nullify all federal education programs. That does sound a bit on the extreme side. I am not a father. I don't have children. So education isn't of the greatest of concerns to me, especially keep in mind I'm a 36-year-old man. It has been well over a decade since I myself was in school. And since I have not become a father since then, it's not something I've thought deeply about. I will say that I will probably homeschool my children simply because I see just in my own life the fruit of homeschooling. The Christians that homeschool their children, those children seem to be godlier, smarter, wiser, and more mature than all of my secular friends. I feel like they had a great advantage over myself in their upbringing that I did not have. And that any and all advantages I want to pass on to my children so they can be even better off than me, doggone it. So I don't know if what they're calling for will aid that or be against that. So I'm not sure if I'm for everything there or against everything there. I am not well informed on that particular issue. So that's one of my near issues. Then Obamacare, in short, they see Obamacare as bad. They want to get rid of it. They want to tear it down. Let me add personally, I'm currently on Obamacare. That is how I have insurance at the moment. And I still want to see Obamacare gone. I don't like it. I don't believe it is the solution that America needs. I don't believe it's the solution that is best for me or for anyone else. I don't like it. Do any parts of it need to stay? Maybe some? Not much. The vast majority of it is, in my opinion, socialistic. And I want to see it scrapped. So I am with the Constitution Party wholeheartedly on Obamacare. Amnesty and illegal immigration. Both of these are really good talk points in regards to Donald Trump. They are very strong against illegal immigration in the Constitution Party. They are they want to try to limit immigration in various ways. I want to say last presidential term. Uh, I don't see it on the website right now, but if I remember correctly, the last presidential term, the last time four years ago that I went to their site, the presidential nominee of the party at that time was calling for a five-year hold on all immigration in this part to this country, period, so we can get a handle on the illegal immigration in this country. I agree with that. I think that is a good idea. I've had the unfortunate background to have lived in a community where there were a large number of illegals and it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't pretty. It was not enjoyable. And I do believe that immigration needs, there needs to be a clamp to hold on that immediately. I think a lot of Americans are losing their jobs because these people get paid under the table, not even minimum wage, but you put five families in one home and everyone's working full time and maybe less than minimum wage, but with that, with all the money pooled, you can subsist. Sometimes even thrive, not just survive. And so I am personally against, I'm, a, I'm against illegal immigration. I'm against supporting it in any way, shape, or form. And that does include the legal, the, um, what the naturalization of the children of illegals, they become American citizens born here. I'm personally against that as well. Um, if the parents, and th this is a bit of a, a segue, but 
just for clarification on my stance on this issue, an illegal child, or, or I should say a child born to illegal immigrants should not then be made legal. They should be illegal as well. And if the parents were theoretically deported, we don't keep the child and separate it from its parents. Um, I don't like the thought of that to begin with, but even if the parents are going to a place less fortunate, and let's be honest, potentially even dangerous than the United States, it is still that parent's child. The child is the parent's responsibility. And thus, the child should go with its parents and should not be given citizenship here in the United States. That's what I believe. And I get, and I don't know how much that ties into the education part up here earlier on, on the on the uh, website. I'm not sure. I don't, that that I really feel like those are two very separate issues. You know, is it, does the is the child legal or not? Do they stay with the parent or not? It would, it, I guess you could say under my view, our education system would not apply to them since they should not be here and they should be deported. So especially under my ideals, under what I believe to be the correct stance, the two are completely segregated because those children will no longer be in this nation. And then it talks about Agenda 21, how they are for, I don't know, it, Agenda 21 is something that was launched by the United Nations. And apparently, according to them, I have not looked this up at all aside from their website, so I don't know how accurate or true this is. Apparently, Agenda 21 has to do with getting rid of American sovereignty and getting rid of a lot of private ownership and globalizing things, having more of a socialist, even communist mindset and a redistribution of wealth. <laughs> I'm certainly against those things. If what they're saying is true about Agenda 21, I would oppose it as well. But since I haven't looked into it, I do not know for sure. On As far as life goes, they are all about the sanctity of life, and they are pro-life um, in all circumstances. And the only time I would personally question that, since I didn't cover this in the first video, would be the life of the mother. Um, even on this, under this unfortunate circumstances of incest and rape put the child up for adoption if, if you just cannot look at the child's face if you can't deal with the child if you don't want to deal with the child if it's too painful please don't kill your child please don't do that please don't end that life God did knit that being together in your womb and he loves that being just as much as he loves you. If you can't live with him or her, please give them a chance at life, even if it's not with you. Someone somewhere else, but don't kill them, please. Having said that, if the, if the woman's life is in danger, we're talking about two human lives. Uh, so... Yeah, how, how do you put that on a scale? How do you measure that? Something that something that questionable that has to be left in the hands of the individual couple. It has to be left up to them. I Abortion may be okay under those circumstances. That's the one area where I can see it possibly being okay because it's two human lives that we're talking about. And there's really not, there's not a, a right answer under circumstances like that. There's just not. Uh, what else? On family, they are against the legalization of homosexuality, of homosexual marriage, of they wanted a constitutional amendment upholding the sanctity of one husband and one wife. Um, they even speak about it being divinely instituted. Again, speaking in reference to God. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights, the founding documents interpreted according to the actual intent of the founding fathers. That is a bit of a debatable point for me. A lot of people would, I think almost everyone in every political party and spectrum would agree with that statement. But defining the intent of the founding fathers, that incredibly wide opinions there as to what exactly that means. So... Uh, just based, I haven't looked deeply on that part of their website. I'm going to assume it's very conservative, like the rest of their website. 
but I don't know for absolute certain. On states' rights, they are very, very, very for states' rights. Um, their statement here, everything not specifically delegated by the Constitution to the federal government, nor prohibited by the Constitution to the states, is reserved to the states or to the people. And I do tend to agree with that. Again, that's there are several subsets of what goes where. That's dealing with pretty much the entirety of the law, federal and all 50 states' laws. For the most part, I am for states' rights. I like that. I agree with that. So for the most part, even though I haven't looked into that deeply, it sounds like me and them are pretty much on the same page there. And then American sovereignty, American government committed to the protection of the borders, trade, and common defense of Americans with no entanglement in foreign alliances. We, talk, we saw a little bit of that in Agenda 21. Again, I haven't read much more on it from their website than what I've already said, so I simply don't know and cannot speak on it. But so like I said, 90 to 95% of what this party stands for, I'm in agreement with. I like it. I'm all about it. And it's so cool that I can, I have finally found a party that I'm in agreement with. It's so cool that I've found a party that I can say, yeah, I, I back them up. I agree with that. So I voted for Darrell Castle of the Constitution Party. I knew he wouldn't win, but to me it was most important to vote my conscience, to vote for someone I thought would not just be the lesser of two evils, but would actually be a good candidate with good principles for this country. A third party vote isn't a flush down the toilet. It's voicing my opinion. It's stating what I believe. It's voting for someone that I thought would actually do a good job, not just mess us up the least. I voted from my heart, and I do not believe anything. I'll say, well, the heart is sinful, so things from the heart can be bad. But w So with that in mind, with that as a context for what I'm about to say, anything done from the heart is the right thing. Again, keep in mind what I just said. I understand that the heart is sinful and not everything we desire is good and right. But at the same time, if, if, what, if what you're doing is from the heart, if what you're doing is from the core of who you are as a person, go for it. Just go for it. Don't deny that. And if it is sinful and you find out it's sinful, then repent and get on God's pathway to what you need to be doing. And holy smoke, time does fly. So... All, two, almost two whole messages, and I haven't talked exclusively about Trump, even though this message was supposed to be about Trump. Well, I've given you all the backstory and more you could possibly want to know about me and my politics, how I voted, why I voted for who I voted for. For Donald Trump, I kind of hate having to summarize him and my thoughts on him in message in a in a two part series where it was he was in the title it makes me feel a little bit bad but and I don't want to extend this to part three so here we go Donald Trump we all know he has no experience in politics that is bad can any could someone learn from the ground up of course it's possible I'm not going to say it's impossible but to do so from the highest position first, to not have any state or federal or even, you know, lawyer type experience. Be, I mean, because lawyers typically, the, or and lawyers, judges, they're the ones who typically get into the political field. That's how it normally works. To no, never a representative, never a senator, never a judge, never a lawyer, never a politician of any stripe. And that, it's kind of sort, it's kind of sort of like the credit score. Having none is worse than having bad, because if it's bad, at least you can track it. So we have no idea, except for what he said, what he's going to do. And it looks like, I, ha I haven't kept up, again, I don't look at politics like 
a whole whole lot not a, on a large scale I observe enough to semi know what's going on but from what I've heard Trump has taken back a lot of the things that he said already and that sounds like a pretty typical politician he was incredibly loud and bombastic throughout pretty much his entire presidential campaign and a lot of the times he sounded like a spoiled brat and a lot of the times he sounded like an ignorant fool a lot of the times he sounded like he didn't know what he was talking about there were many times where he didn't give a direct answer he just sides up the question because it, and it looked like he did not even know what the pot potential answer for the question could be now, I know he's not a politician, but again, that's why it's a bad thing. That's a huge negative. Whereas Hillary just has a horrible... I mean, we, we can look at her and tell she has a bad political record. Period. And WikiLeaks just kind of... It, it, like everything we might have suspected to be true, WikiLeaks just kind of proved was true as far as manipulating the media and doing stuff there to ensure her victory and to make sure her name got out there the way she wanted it to. It's kind of like we know it's happening, but for it to be thrown in our face like that and to have it confirmed like that is just like, oh my gosh. And and as far all I can say is, one, I didn't agree with a lot of her views. Two, I definitely did not like her as a person she should be in jail. If she wasn't a Clinton, she would be in jail. If she didn't have the influence and the power that she did, she would be in jail. A lot of people have gone to jail. In fact, I think all people, except for her, have gone to jail for the things that she was found guilty of doing. But money and power do have their perks. And that... That's not a particular blow against our justice system or against our country. Every country throughout all of history has a similar record. I don't know if America's is better or worse than most countries. I haven't looked at that statistical sheet. I know every nation's guilty of it. It's not like we're the worst nation on the planet or our leaders are the worst leaders on the planet or anything. Honestly, I don't even think Hillary Clinton is the worst political leader out there. Yeah, she's a, she's a scumbag. She's a liar. But, oh my gosh, that is, I'm like, one, that seems to be well into the majority of all politicians that are out there, period. And two, she still leads ahead of a lot of the political leaders around this planet. So she is not, you say all the stuff you want about her, prove all the stuff that you want to be true about her, that is bad, that is wrong, and why she shouldn't have been president, and why you're glad she's not. There are worse leaders out there than her, who are more evil than her, than her, who have done worse things than her. And I think that <clears throat> is pretty easily provable if you look at several nations. And I'm not talking about in the past, I'm talking about right now. If you look at several nations that currently exist, I think it would be easy to get a handful of leaders and say, you know what, they're a whole lot worse than her. And as for Donald Trump, I'm... I am glad he got the presidency over Clinton, despite the way he sounds stupid sometimes, the way he sounds ignorant sometimes. I am glad that he got it. And from the bottom of my heart, I'm glad he won it over Hillary Clinton. Between the two, between those two, neither one of which I liked, I'm glad from the bottom of my heart that Trump, between those two, won it. The wall, the wall between the United States and Mexico, it sounds so ridiculous. At the same time, there is a very real border patrol between the two nations. And illegal immigrants do sneak in all the time. I don't know about making Mexico pay for it. I don't see how that would even be possible. A lot of those illegal immigrants are coming into this country because there is no money in their country. They can't provide for their families in their country. So I don't know how feasible it would be to help get Mexico to build the wall. I don't think that's possible at all. Do I think a wall is a bad idea? I can't say that I really hate the idea. 
I can't say it's an entirely bad idea. I don't think Mexico's going to pay for it. They probably won't put a penny into it. But I don't think it's a very bad idea. Immigration is very out of control, and something needs to be done. Something big does need to be done. And as far as Obamacare being torn to pieces, I will suffer from not having insurance anymore if that happens, or I'll have to find a more expensive provider, something like that, at the exact same time. I don't think Obamacare is the answer that this nation needs. When Trump said he would tear it down, I was like, yes, good, that's awesome. He didn't sound like he really knew how to do it, but I still like the idea of it being torn down. So, I'm for that. Those are two issues that I am particularly, I particularly, I was like, you know what? Trump may not know exactly how to do it, but I think he's got the right stance on the issues. I think he's got some decent ideas there. And I also know that he is pro-life. So that was kind of like, a, okay. A lot of people were saying that he um, was pro-choice, and in the past he was, but from everything that I could research recently, within the last several years, he is pro-life. That He changed his mind several years ago, not just around the time of the election. So that was something from his heart. So I'm definitely for him on that matter. And 31 minutes, time is up. I'm glad between the two Donald Trump got it. I still think there is a great potential for harm to come from him, particularly because he doesn't know what he's doing. So my prayers will be with him. My prayers will be with this nation. I wish him the very, very best of God's blessings because if he succeeds, we as a nation succeed. I was like, you can, you can badmouth him all you want. You can talk trash all you want. You can oppose him all you want. But if he does a good job, all of us who live in America are going to benefit from that. So my prayers are with him and for him and with this country and for this country. And guys, the, the, I feel like the, the gospel presentation and invitation to Jesus is it's not really flowing with this message. That wasn't the, This wasn't an evangelical message or an evangelistic message. It wasn't here to give you the gospel of Jesus Christ. At the same time, though, I want to give that opportunity. I try to give that opportunity at all of my 30-minute messages. So I want to do so right now as well. Even though nothing is connected, even though nothing has particularly pointed in the direction of you need to repent, you need Jesus, I do want to say right now, you are a sinner. You do need to repent. You do need Jesus. And if you feel that need in your heart right now, if you feel the Holy Spirit calling you to come to Him, I may not have said anything. I may not have needed to. You may simply be in a position right now where God's been working on you, and then out of nowhere, here comes this video, and there's this guy on the internet saying, you know what? You need Jesus. But And, you know, normally it would just be a guy on the internet, but because of where you are right now, you know you need Jesus. You know it's for real. And even if you don't feel particularly called, if you want to become a Christian, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, even if it's not some something that's been leading up to this, maybe it's just hitting you right now, you know what? That Christianity thing is a good idea. And you don't even know why? You can become a Christian right now, along with anyone else who has a story leading up to this point. Even if you have no story leading up to this video, leading you to Jesus at this point, if you feel like you need him, you can cry out to him right now. And he will forgive you of your sin, and he will make you his child. So if you want to become a Christian, just ask him. Say, say that you believe in him, that he died for you, and that you want your sins forgiven. And if you want a model prayer, something to follow on, let me shoot. Let me offer up that model prayer right now. Pray along with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe you're God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you rose again three days later. Please forgive me of my sins right now. And thank you for being my God, my Lord, and my Savior. From this day forward, I live my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, 
That is awesome. That means you're a Christian. That means you're my brother or my sister in Christ right now. And that is amazingly awesome. Get in the Bible just a little bit every single day. It doesn't have to be like three chapters, five chapters, or a whole book in a week or something like that. Just like a chapter a day, maybe even just a psalm or a proverb a day, just to get into the Word of God. You want to hear God's voice. You want to get to know your Creator a little bit better than one that you now call your God and your Savior. Read His Word. Read His Word. It's the best way to get to know Him and to get to know what His heart is on things, to get to know what He thinks about things. Shoot up and shoot up a little prayer every day, just as simple as, thank you, God, for being with me today, or God, I'm in trouble. I need your help today. That's a prayer. God hears that. It's good if you set aside a little bit of time and you um, are a little bit more specific in your prayers. That's great. That's wonderful. But you don't have to be. You're allowed to start small. You're allowed to shoot up simple prayers. It doesn't have to be anything big or complex. Just a simple thank you or a simple help me. That is enough for the Father to know exactly where you're coming from and what you need. If you want to be more specific, by all means, go ahead. It's awesome, and I think it's a good thing to do. But you don't have to right away. You don't have to start knowing what you're doing. Just dive right in and get into it. Speaking of diving in, find a local church also. Find a place that also believes that Jesus is God and Lord and Savior, and that the Bible is the Word of God. Find a place and a people that believe these things. It is so encouraging for yourself personally and for your faith to be around like-minded people who will encourage you, who will um, lift you up, who will be there for you in the good times and in the bad times, and who will love you for who you are. So guys, that's it for the message. I definitely went over. Holy smoke. For anyone who has lasted this long, thank you so much for following me in this um, two-part series. Thank you so much for giving me your time. It means a lot to me, and it's greatly appreciated. And to those of you who became Christians once again, welcome to the family. It is good to have you. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.